It's, uh, well, as I guess you can tell where I am. It's a familiar scene. Ah. Back to looking for the false and stuff. beginning to get a real good idea <laughs> of how to make arrow points and spare points and stuff now after looking at all this stuff. That could have been in that lateral weight. I have to find, because I usually secured them to the back end of the lateral thrower with careful wrappings, tight, good tight wrappings. And that gave the lateral thrower some weight to cast the arrow off with. But I'm looking for the, there's the, the real good examples of the that lateral weights are the winged type, rectangular type, circular type, and they all have holes drilled through them, sizable holes for to, to fit on the uh, to fit on the back of that lateral. One more of those uh, slate knives. Yeah, another slate knife. That could have been from a thousand years ago. It could have been from two thousand years ago. I don't know. I'm going to hazard a guess it in a thousand year range. Now, uh, I wish I could find some the Micmac tools. They were they were easy enough to identify. The knickknack stuff was easy to identify, yes, because it was very specific in design. But these paleo ones and archaic ones are, are much more difficult. Because there's transition points, and the transition points can throw a novice right off. I mean, can fool a novice. And I am a novice, yes. That's a good thing I don't do this for a living. <laughs> Out there would be laughing at me. They probably already have. 
I gotta get my bat, my back to that rock. Because when I found the balsam point, I had turned around and that rock was the first one I saw. That's the first landmark on this tidal flat. That stood out. murky there. Okay. Let's turn 180 degrees. This should be right in front of me. That should be the area where I found the Falsen Point. The Debert Falsen Point, I should say. That was a definite work point. Same as this. And this. Obviously, it's either an accident or a very skillfully flaked off piece of handle on that and you have yourself a first class skinner. I would say that was a, an Indian artifact, that, that Skinner one. Now, why am I not finding fossil corals out here? 
good question. Oh, there's geese. Geese in the bog. Flying nice and low in the water. Well, they had no choice. I mean, nice and low. They kind of have no choice because if there's no visibility up above. Speaking of ducks and geese, do you know how the Micmac and the Maliseet and the other Indians used to hunt geese? and ducks well wherever huge flocks of these birds gathered they had to rest at night and these flocks are so huge that the, the bird numbers so incredibly numerous that the uh, the practices of the early aboriginals even up to the time of contact was to take canoes, torches, clubs, and well of course you know during the daytime they would probably use arrow, bow and arrow, but they would quietly sneak in among the bird flocks at night and all at once light up the torches and the ducks and the geese would uh, would grow into a panic when these fires suddenly the, these torches burst into flame among their numbers and the Indians would make all kinds of racket of course and the birds would just fly around and in uh, disarrayed circles trying to find a safe place to land because they weren't able to they weren't able to see well because of the fire light and what happened the uh, Indians had just simply club any club the birds that came flying around them just imagine a whole bunch of feathers blowing all around you. Well, that's how the birds would fly around the Indian hunters. And once they clubbed enough to fill a canoe, they could go home. But a whole band or, or several bands would get together and, uh, in, the summer, in the summer bands, when they gathered together, then they would it would make it a big hunt, not just one person or not, not just one canoe, not two canoes. They would make it a great number of canoes with all the, all the, probably all the men from different band groups coming together for that big hunt. And then they would try to club down as many ducks and geese as they could. But those days, the, the, the flocks could mile could could were so big that they could be miles miles long and uh, so that kind of hunting was possible then yeah okay well that's enough of enough of <laughs> of geese and micmac hunters let's get right back down to what I was looking for that Deborah Falson point. It's got to be. It's got to be here somewhere. It, it could not have been flushed out there because the seaweed would never. The seaweed would trap it.
Well, I already went over this part. This is part. Could that be a paleo point? I definitely think yes. <laughs> Paleo Eskimo Point. Very easy possibility. Yep. Because that was a type of Paleo Eskimo arrowhead. Oh, hello crab. I'm sorry. Yeah. What's this? Well, I'm looking at that. That strikes me almost like a Fossil algae, maybe? I don't know. That's easily possible. I've already found fossil seaweed. Oh, sorry, crab. That could have been anything, but it would have made a, it would have made a suitable lateral weight. Okay, you just, yeah, you have to Google at lateral weights, and then you'll know how they wrapped it on. This is glass? Yeah. Well, that's glass, all right. The design is interesting. That design is probably a 60s or something. Now, I, yeah, I, I discovered recently too that cup stones were also used as fat lamps. Uh, basically, you make a wick, put some fat in it, 
floral of flame and when the fat start and when when the fat starts fat melts the wick soaks it up and you uh, basically light the wick like a terracotta lamp but these crude stone neolithic fat lamps were often just shallow little bowls uh, pecked out of rocks that's what they were But the piece that I thought was a cup stone at ladle weight, well, I, I had I had a smell of it, and you could smell sulfur. So, which means fire was used in it. That's what led me to the conclusion that it was a fat lamp, like caribou fat, caribou fat lamp for. The Eskimos had really nice big fat lamps, but I'm sure that I'm sure that the uh, Paleo Indians and, and Archaic Woodland peoples had their fat lamps too. Okay. Now, this is the big rock. Is there anything trapped down here? Please let me find my balsam, debris balsam. I want to find it again. Yeah, this was a... You can see where... This was used for napping. It was used for napping with stone because you can see where chips is knocked off the side. Before you go. Picture a stone right here where my thumb is and then you strike the edge. And that's how you got slivers of other stone fashioned into spare heads, etc. Another, I'm going to call this an adds because it's shaped perfectly for it. The small end fit up into the adds handle. This was the business end. You just you can shave down uh, stuff. You can shave branches down to staves, etc., etc. You can debark them. Yeah, you never know what you're going to find when you start going through here. to find uh, ooze with the actual holes still with the holes in them that would be great Okay. The other thing to look out for too is 
a uh, well, shellfish. There were always shellfish. But, oh, yeah. This this is a work stone. You can tell by the marking right here. Yeah, they never finished it, but they intended to do something with it. That would have been an Eskimo type point, Paleo Eskimo type point, I should say. This is a this is a nice Paleo Indian piece, and I'm going to say early. It's yeah, an early piece that one. They were carefully fluted. It was meant for a spear. A spear or a knife, one of them. It's a nice, nice little arrowhead. I don't know. Well, this could be an atlatl weight. It's flat, the right shape. Well, I'll say a very strong possibility it wasn't atlatl weight. The atlatl weights change. The early ones were flat stones like this. And then they, uh, there was a an, a revolution in the shape of atlatl stones. They be, began to make them really uh, ornately, um, shaping them like wings, rectangles, and uh, circles. Am I looking at a cup stone? Well, um, from the from the looks of it, I would say I'm spelling. I've 